Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the new stereo enhancements in Rotopaint and Roto in Nuke 7. I'm going to start off in Nuke 6.3 and I'm going to show you the old method of working with stereo. I've got two images here and I've also got a disparity map created by Ocular. I'm just going to join these views together and I'm going to copy the disparity map across. And now, if I open up the paint node, and I go into his face, and I paint a line, we'll see it doesn't line up in the same place on the right eye. Go into the brush stroke, I can correlate the points. In this case, I want it to go from left to right. And now, we'll see it lines up according to the disparity map created by Ocular. However, you'll see we've also now got two brush strokes, which can make it difficult to keep your strokes in sync. So now we're in Nuke 7, I've got the same shot we were looking at before, but we're looking at the untreated eyes, we're also looking at sRGB, not log, so we can see more detail. And as you can see, the two eyes have a colour discrepancy. We've also got a vertical discrepancy, both of which may have been corrected before you work on the shot, but in this case we're going to assume that we're working on uncorrected, untreated stereo eyes. So I just set my project up to be stereo, this is very important as you won't be able to see the new features in Roto Paint. I'm going to use the colours in the UI which gives me red for the left and green for right. And if I bring up a join views, now we've got two eyes coming down the single viewer pipe. If I had a Roto Paint here, now a few things that have appeared in Nuke 7 that aren't available in Nuke 6 is in the transform tab you have the ability now to split off any of the parameters and you have a new parameter stereo offset that allows you to adjust the paint strokes to match the different eyes you also have within the stroke nodes and the time offset of the clone node the ability to split the eyes as well so what I'm going to do first then is to paint a line down this chap's nose. I'm working on the hero eye here. If we look at the left eye, we can see the paint stroke doesn't line up. So if I go and split off the left eye, I can then align the paint stroke on the top. And now we can see the paint stroke is aligned to both eyes. Again, working on the hero right eye, I'm going to draw around his ear here. Again, split off the eyes, look at the left eye, and adjust the left to match. And now we have both paint strokes aligned to the different eyes and you notice there are different values and this is because the characters are at different distances to the camera. So that's the principle of it but that's not particularly accurate. I'm going to show you a different technique to get a more accurate convergence value which will then pump into the rotor paint nodes. Now Newt comes as standard with a reconverge node I'm just going to put a mixed views in underneath so we can see both eyes mixed together. Now the convergence node will use ocular and you can converge over a certain point but I won't tell you how much it's converged by or you can have this convergence offset here that allows you to adjust the eyes this way. However this doesn't have any vertical offset and as I pointed out in the beginning these two plates have a vertical misalignment. So it's not going to help us in this instance. So I'm going to use a slightly different technique now. I'm going to split the two eyes out. I'm going to transform the right eye and then invert. 
add a dissolve and half mix the two eyes together and we end up with something that when the images are aligned will give us a grey background or colour background when they're not just to make it a bit stronger I'm going to add a grade node underneath it and now we can go and align our right eye to our left eye now the reason I'm doing it that way rather than aligning my left eye to my right eye is because I'm going to be painting on the right eye as that's my hero eye and then I'm going to have to transform the strokes to match the left eye let's work out that vertical offset Gonna make that grade a bit stronger. There, and I think we're pretty close. Now we've got a slight difference in color. This is because the two images are not exactly the same. But now we have got a translate position that we can use in our paint node. So if I go into here, again working on the right eye, put a line down his nose, if I split this off, now I'm going to copy the translate parameter into the left eye. This is because I've aligned the right eye to the left eye, I want to right align the brush stroke which I painted on the right eye to the left eye too. And now you can see that we've got that aligned. I go back to this chap here again, again working on the right eye. I go back into the transform and align it for his ear. got a new value there, go back to my paint stroke and again I'll split off the right eye and I'll just copy that value in there and then we've got the two paint strokes aligned like this. So now I'd like to look at a more complicated scenario we got the same shot as before, but this time I've stabilised the shot around the centre guy's hat, which will make it easier to roto. And if we view our tool from before, we are to set up an animated offset. So just do a few frames here. Now the beauty of this method is because it's non-destructive. If I make a mistake while aligning the two eyes, I'll still be able to correct my rotor paint later on. So now I've got a rough alignment. I'll just do a spot check through. Good. Now we're able to do our rotor. So this time I'm going to bring up a rotor node. And we'll view the stabilised image. I'll just close down this transform for the moment. We'll come back to it shortly. So I'll just start off by putting a simple rotor shape around his hat. So we'll cut to a rotor that I completed earlier. And if we look in the left eye, we can see that we need to offset the entire shape. So again, we bring up our transform, go into our roto, split off the eyes, and then I can copy, translate into the left eye the whole animation. And now 
we can see that our eyes are aligned. So next I need to apply this to the actual image itself. So I need to take the stabilize and I need to apply the match move here to the roto. Just close that new tracker down. So I can take the roto, I go to the transform tab, then the translate I can link to the tracker. And I can take the match move data and apply it to the rotor spline. And here you can see it works for both right and left eye. So a very useful new tool in Roto and Roto Paint for Nuke 7.